In this video, I'm gonna give you three ideas to help you get the most out of those contact sensors in your Apple HomeKit smart home. Hey guys, Chris Young here from HomeKit Geek, the channel where we bring you new smart home content on the Apple HomeKit smart home. I've dabbled in the other ones, but I'm really focused and doubled down on HomeKit this year. If you wanna follow along in my journey, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and ring that bell to be notified when new videos are added. In this video, I'm gonna show you what I have done with contact sensors in my home to give me a better overall experience and turn my house into a smart house, not just a automated house, not a voice controlled house, but truly smart, that's what I'm going for. So the first idea that I have for you guys here was inspired by one of you. So this was in the comments in a recent video I had asking about, you know, how could we make our closets a little smarter? Some of us have a closet with a light in it, like a walk-in closet, that kind of scenario. And it would be nice if you could get all of it into one automation rather than having double, triple automations to be able to turn the lights on and off, that kind of thing. So I have set up an automation here where the trigger is the state change of the contact sensor. I don't really care whether it opens or closes. I'm gonna deal with that in the automation itself. So the trigger is gonna be state change. Door opens, closes, we're gonna trigger and run this automation. Next step is to get the state of that contact sensor and see whether the state changed, whether it opened or it closed. So the magic here, in case you haven't seen this before, is you go all the way to the bottom when you're selecting accessories or scenes and you will see that convert to shortcut button. So once you do that, this opens up a whole new world of programmatic automations, which is what we're doing here. So essentially what I've got on here right now is the basic logic in plain English of what we're gonna do. When the door opens or closes, I'm gonna check the state. If the door is open, turn the light on. If the door closes, turn the light off. So all of this is packed into a single automation, really simple. I've got a couple of different scenes to support this, which is on or off, and that's it. As soon as you open the door, the lights will open. As soon as you close the door, the lights go off. If I wanted to, I could extend this and put a little more logic in and do like a five minute wait period, turn the lights off after a five minute wait period, those kinds of things. But again, we'll get to that in the future. So num idea number two is to make your smart thermostat just a little bit smarter. Now, this will really work with any thermostat that you have that's HomeKit enabled and a contact sensor on any of your doors and windows. I am doing this on my patio door. Again, on the left here, you can see the plain English logic. So in this one, I've done even a little bit more beyond just this, that state change, but that's gonna be the basic trigger is gonna be the exact same thing that I did with the master closet. When the state changes of the door, I'm going to run this automation, open, close, I don't care, right? That's what I'm gonna do is run this single automation. So the next thing I'm gonna do is get a little bit smarter here because this is really gonna be a seasonal automation for me. This isn't something I'm gonna do in the winter. I am only gonna be doing this in the summer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the month to see if it's in summer. So whether that is June, July, August, September here in Canada. And if it is in those months, I'm gonna do something a little bit tricky here. I'm gonna wait a two minute period, so 120 seconds, and then I'm gonna recheck the contact sensor to see if that thing is still open. So in the summer, what you'll often do is you'll wanna get that fresh summer breeze, you open up the patio doors, you leave the screen door shut. This automation reminds me of my mom, how many times have we all heard, hey, I'm not cool on the outside, I'm not warm on the outside, I don't need none of that, so this is what I'm doing with that automation. So I'm gonna first check to see if the patio door is opened, right? any state change at all. If it is opened, then I'm gonna do something a little bit smarter here, and first I'm gonna check, is it summertime? And by summertime in my neck of the woods, that means is it in the month of June, July, August, or September? Any of those four months here in Canada, that's approximately when summer is, so I'm gonna base it on those months. So if the door opens, I'm gonna start a two minute clock. After two minutes, I'm gonna check the status of the door again to see whether or not that door is still open, right? If it is still open, what am I gonna do now? I'm gonna set a preset scene that I've got in, in my HomeKit home called thermostat off. And basically, I'm just gonna turn the thermostat off because I don't need to cool all the outdoors in the summer. It's, it's not gonna work for me, it's just gonna cost me money. So in the event that the door closes, within that two minutes, I don't need to do anything at all. I'm just gonna pass, go on, go on with my business, no problem at all. So to close this off, the last thing I'm gonna do is if the door closes, if that's the initial trigger, if the door closes, I am going to change the state of the thermostat back into my summer mode. So again, I've got this real simple logic here. I'm gonna check if it's summer. I'm gonna check if the door's open. If it's left open for more than two minutes, I'm gonna turn the thermostat off. And when the door closes, I'm just gonna turn the thermostat back on to cooling like it should be in the summer. So as my third and last one here, I'm using a contact sensor as a proxy for one of my kids. 
like with many people, I've got shared custody with my kid's mom and, uh, you know, sometimes they're not here. Now, there are some alarms, like when they get up to go to school in this morning, that are dedicated only for those kids. And really, I, I don't need those alarms on when they're not here. So I'm using the contact sensor that I've got put on a whiteboard in my office to basically, as a, a check before I'm going to do anything else in these automations, uh, I'm going to use that to check whether or not the kid is my, my kid is home or not. So I'm going to be able to use this in a lot of different ways. But in this particular one, I'm going to do a 7 a.m. alarm to get my teenager out of bed and get him to school. And we're going to have a little bit of fun with this one. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm going to say at 7 a.m. on the morning, in the morning, on weekdays, so Monday through Friday, first thing you're going to do is go and check the state of the contact sensor that is assigned to this particular child. If the contact sensor is closed, it means he's home. If it's open, it means he's not. So this is just a proxy for that occupancy state. So there's other ways you can do this, but for me, I find it convenient in that I've got these uh, the contact sensors with magnets mounted on them right on my whiteboard in my office. So it's really easy for me to pull it apart or put it together as a proxy for whether or not my uh, my kids are with their mom. So if they are home, I'm going to... I'm then going to execute the rest of this scene. So going through here, we're going to do a little bit more logic where first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open the blinds on him. So these are the Ikea Symphonics blinds. Work great for this. Every morning, 7 a.m., the blinds are going to open up and blind him, get him out of bed. After the blinds open, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to blink his lights on and off uh, three times. So this is cool because I can do this using the wait and the repeat steps and really simplify my logic. I don't have to repeat the same steps over and over in the convert to shortcut itself. And in our last step here, right now that he's blinded and kind of a little bit, you know, getting into consciousness, it's time to just have a little bit of fun because I'm that kind of dad. Yep, indeed, I Rick rolled him. So I don't want any content strikes against me. So I'm not going to actually play the song, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Those are just three ideas of, uh, of some things you can do from contact sensors and the convert to shortcuts. There is a world of possibilities that Apple has given us with the convert, convert to shortcut piece. And if you guys are interested at all in me going through any of the examples I have today as an additional video, do me a favor, put that in the comments below. If you've got questions, concerns, you loved it, you hated it, any of that stuff, it's all good for the algorithm. Just put it down there and I will reply to you as quickly as I can. And now we've reached the end of the video. Right about now, YouTube should hear or hear be presenting you with some videos they think you might be interested in next. See you guys soon.